Okay, so we're going to do another round of the Samsung S95D to the left versus the Samsung S90C to the right. There has been a massive amount of questions and, and debates, and I'll just tell you straight up, like, you probably want to just get yourself the Samsung S90D, save yourself the money, because for the amount of money they're charging, where it's basically $3,000, it's not worth it. That is the honest answer. Now, there are a lot of people that are going to filibuster and try to use the gimmick this year, which is the glare-free technology. I will just put it to you like this. I have been sitting here all day, quite literally, running numerous tests, and I'm about to spill the tea. So if you like that kind of thing, smack a like on this video, and let's dive right in. Okay, so for starters, I think everybody would be interested to know that, yes, technically, the contrast ratio is higher on the Samsung S95D, coming in at... Uh, 4,600 to 1. Yes, by the way, you can measure the contrast ratio of OLED. It is not an infinite number that cannot be measured, much like the reporters like to suggest. OLEDs typically sit around the 400,000 to 1 mark. That's just putting that out there so everybody knows. Now, we have the Samsung S90D coming in at 4,600, like, 40... Uh, 4,000, no, 464,000 to 1. Basically, you lose a little bit here and there. It's not a lot, but less is less. So basically, you're looking at what? It's like 69 versus 64. That's the difference that you'd be looking at, right? So it's not really that much, but it is a difference. So that's the technical side when we look at numbers. However, this is why on this channel I talk about something called perceptual accuracy. It is the most important type of accuracy there is because it's about what you can see visibly. And I'll tell you right now, when I did the pixel test, it was every bit what I saw in real life where the pixels on the Samsung S90D were clear, pronounced, pure, and the pixels on the Samsung S95D, they looked gritty, like it, it was it was like hit with glue or, you know, splattered with a, a, a blurry filter of some sort or like I was shooting through glass, like really crappy old school glass from like the 50s. You know, you guys seen those buildings that have those glass like that? That's what this looks like. The the panel is stupid. And I'm just going to say it. It's it's like, you know, an office building, how if you look up at the lights of an office building, they have that plastic over it and it's all graded like that. And it, it just looks like a grate over a light. That's what this looks like. It does not look good. And the matte finish is a total detriment to what would have been probably one of the better TVs we've seen this year. And I think it has everything to do with, again, just piss poor decisions, I suppose. But I will throw this part out there. They did claim to be a reference accurate display and all of that good jazz, which that part is 100% true. Their numbers are well below a Delta Error of 3. The average is 1.4 Delta Error, and again, 1.8 is the max. Again, these numbers are very, very low, and again... You basically have a 100% calibrated display. You do not need to hire anybody. That is a good thing if you want reference accurate image quality. Now... I'm also going to throw this part out there. I don't know why you would ever want that because it looks damn bad. It, there is there is no sugarcoating it. There's no being nice about it. It looks bad. Furthermore, the contrast ratio in filmmaker mode, which is the most accurate mode, actually falls below the 400,000 to 1 number I gave you earlier. You see, the 400,000 to 1 that I gave you, that was with my setting. That was with my setup. If you use the setting that they give you, your OLED is going to sit at, wait for it, 260,000 to 1. That's half, all right? Half of its capability, literally. Your Why half your capability? I will never know. I do not believe in this reference crap. It looks bad. We will do more videos on that because if I touch on that too much, it will go on forever. But I'm telling you, it looks bad. Now, the part that really upset me the most, though, through this review process was the color coverage. You see, with the Samsung S95B, we had 90% of the BT2020 color coverage. This year, on the Samsung S95D, we have 87%. 87. That's ridiculous. Now, don't get me wrong. They have some redeeming parts. The DCI-P3 is 122% of DCI-P3, which, fantastic. That's great. That means it has a ton of DCI-P3 color coverage, which is 
brilliant, but everybody wants VT2020. Now, the thing I found most interesting, though, is we have on the Samsung S90D, we have 88%. So that is an increase over what we saw on the Samsung S95D, showing that that color advantage is going to kind of go towards the screen without the glare. At least that's my theory on that. Now, again, it's not all bad, though, for the Samsung S95D because there were some damn impressive parts. The brightness is probably one of those parts. Now, if you do the brightness tests in SDR, you're going to be getting about 750 nits. That's just what it gets. If you go to a 50% window or half the screen of brightness, you are going to have 433 nits. If you go to a 100% full screen, you're going to be dropped down to 285 nits. It's not a bright TV in SDR. If you are talking about again, windows, small windows of peak brightness. It just doesn't get as bright as it does in HDR. In HDR, that's where we saw some absolutely ridiculous nonsense happen. In a 2% window, it is 2,118.6 on the nit range. That is, that is the highest I think I've ever seen on any OLED period. People were talking about it's a 1,700 um, nit TV that it's a 30% improvement over last year. No, it's much higher than that. The improvement as far as brightness is real. Now, my theory on this is because they know that their screen that they put on this year creates a ton of glare and like a foggy haze to the screen. The way that they're combating it this year is basically, you know what, let's just go ahead and raise the brightness to give more color volume if we can in certain areas. And hopefully that does it for us. But that is what it is. Now, if you go to a 10% window, it becomes 1500 nits at 1512. Then it starts going up a little bit more at a 25% window being 1752. Again, very high numbers. Then we have a 50% window being 907 or rather a, uh, what is that? A 25% window being uh, 907 and the 10% window is 1752. Uh, then we go to the 50% window, which was 544. And then the full screen brightness that you get in HDR, again, not very bright at 329 nits. So it's not going to break the mold in any way, shape, and or form in that aspect. The takeaway of this is really, quite simply put, the TV is a professionally calibrated TV, which when I was showing those examples in filmmaker mode, I did have quite a few people that were saying, oh, could you lower the brightness to make it look better? And I'll just show you guys in real time, okay? So here we have an image on the screen of the ballet dancer, okay? And I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you use filmmaker mode, okay? I'm not in filmmaker mode, I'm using my settings in movie mode. I could also use standard mode if I wanted to, to target more brightness, because again, I've been working on this TV to really see what it could truly do, because unlike other reviewers, I don't just like take it out of the box and say that's it. I wanna push it and see where it can go, right? And it hit its ceiling. And I can safely say it's still far better than what filmmaker mode looks like. Now, I've received some rebuttals, particularly from a couple other people, one of which being a YouTuber by the name of D-Batch. He's been a rebuttaler for years on this channel. And I want to call him out specifically just to give a proper fuck you. And also to show this in real time. You can go to filmmaker mode after you hit reset, okay? Because his complaint was that it just resets with the eco saving mode. Even if you go into your energy saving portion and you turn off eco saving, it's not going to make the picture look better, chief. In fact, it looks every bit as shit as it did a second ago. Jaundice, pale, you pick whatever name you want to call this trash over here, but that's what it looks like. Again, we will do this in real time now that I've reset the picture. What they give you, what I give you. A big difference. It's not even the same TV. And we can do this all day, every day, with so many different examples. Dead, lifeless picture to the left, everything you paid for to the right. And you would never see these kinds of images, you would never see what your TV's capable of if I didn't make settings for these TVs. Now, this offends a lot of the professionals that stand behind how washed, dead, and ugly the image quality looks. They like it, they think that you need to be watching everything washed out without color, and I don't stand by that. That bugs them. 
profoundly because they believe in their old ways. To which I will tell every industry professional who has even clicked on this video remotely, the standards from 30 years ago do not apply to quantum.tvs. Pull your head out of your ass, learn what I did, and do it how I do it. Because clearly, my way is better. Your way is washed, ugly, pukey, dead, and nobody fucking likes it. Period. That out of the way, throwing the shade where it needs to go. For everybody else, you can clearly see what I'm talking about. It's foggy, hazy, crappy. The Samsung S95D has a lot of potential and could have reached it had they put the right screen on there versus this crappy, disgusting, foggy mess of a screen that they are charging people an arm and a leg for. They want you to watch everything in puke mode, filmmaker mode, fully calibrated because I've run the numbers. It is an accurate image. 100% very reference accurate. The problem though, it doesn't look good. And when you go up against something that has the color, we immediately hear the rebuttal, you just like oversaturated images. You have inaccurate skin tones. I'm sorry, but when you make a scene like this, for example, on the screen right now, do you really think they wanted all the colors to be pale, ugly, washed out, and have none of the ambiance of the city? Or do you think it would look more like this where you can see the pink glow and everything? I've seen sunsets that look like that, but I've never seen any that look that washed out. It's all about perceptual accuracy, folks. And you will find the biggest fight on your hands if you try to explain this to a room full of purists that believe that the old ways work. So much so that they are justifying the blurry, foggy, hazy black levels and blurry quality that this matte finished screen on the S95D gives you over the Samsung S90D. And again, you can get it to look better. I am not saying it is not possible, but I am saying you need my level of skill. And that is not cockiness, arrogance, or disrespect. It is a fundamental fact. This is a professionally calibrated display right here. This is what it looks like. Take it all in, folks. This is the reference accuracy, the Pantone validated colors that they were bragging about, that they stood on business for. This is the one that they are talking about. And this is what I offer. It's a massive difference to, to like such a big difference. I have more people in the everyday world in disbelief that the TVs ship this badly, that they look this bad by comparison, and that my transformations are really this dramatic, from this ugly color to this. It's literally creating a sense of like mass disbelief, but this is how most people are pulling their TVs out of the box and just watching them. They're not watching what I do. And the relevancy of this with this whole re-comparison of these two displays is to tell you this simply. The Samsung S95D is not better than the Samsung S90D. You have no business spending the extra money for a TV that weighs more because that stand is heavy, outdated, and very awkward compared to the very lightweight, easy to move around S90D. And the speakers aren't as good even though they have more going on there, I suppose. It just... What they did with the S95D could only be described as dropping the ball in every area except brightness and slightly more contrast, but not giving you the, the perceptual contrast that you need. And a perfect example, which is why I have it up on the screen right now, are these dresses. You can see on the Samsung S90D every dress isolated clearly. I don't need to point to a single one. You can see it. Where it's just more blurry. Details become more blurry. Colors become less accurate on the Samsung S95D by comparison because of the fog haze filter they put over it. Now, some people say that, you know, this is because we have curtains and we want to watch TV at the same time or we have lights in our room, to which I will say, if you really want to av avoid this whole debacle, make sure you close your curtains and turn off your lights. It's common sense. Don't spend the extra money that's not needed because everybody here is not rich, right? We work hard for our money. And I don't do this for the disconnected rich people, right? The people who say money is no object to me. Okay, go do your thing, guy. Don't watch me because I'm here for families, okay? People with kids, people who are barely getting any fucking time for themselves and finally gets the money to do something nice for themselves. I make my videos for those people, not people who are disconnected from reality, throwing money at whatever they want, okay? The reality is... This TV right here is way overpriced and has no business being overpriced because what you're looking at right now is my calibration. What you're looking at is what they're going to give you. You're going to pay almost $3,000 and that's the image you get right there. 
You can make the decision for yourself, of course, naturally. I'm not here to tell you what to buy. I'm here to give you information to arm you with knowledge so you can make the right decision and the right call for you and your family at home. But for me and mine, I would never in a million years pay three grand for the Samsung S95D to the left that looks terrible. Now, I'm going to also do this in real time as well, because don't think for one second I'm going to let the Samsung S95D off the hook. Because what we're going to do in real time, yeah, is we're going to go over to filmmaker mode on the S90D and we're just going to show you in real time it looks every bit as bad as that too. And we're going to go all the way down to the bottom on the S90D and we're going to hit reset to picture so you know I didn't touch any of those values as well. And we're also going to go into energy saving mode since apparently for some people that matters. Now what does suck is like there's moments where the UI is just fucking sticky and you're seeing that right here on the S90D. By the way, it happens on the S95D as well. So Tizen, not perfect at all. There are moments where the screen literally will freeze on you. And that's also kind of like one of the things I have a big problem with, especially given like this is their new like 2024 TV that's supposed to be like hot shit. And again, you, you're paying thousands of dollars for things that still freeze on you, even though they have a new processor in there. Yeah, fucking right. Okay, but again, similar fashion. You guys saw we reset. We are in filmmaker mode. We're going to go down to the energy saving mode, and we're going to turn off the brightness limiting feature. And I don't know if you can see the screen very well, but they both look terrible. Neither one looks fantastic. You can see slightly more contrast on the Samsung S95D, it's just a little bit tighter, but I mean, a couple clicks on the remote and I could do that as well. But again, just kind of giving you the idea, you're not getting the best out of your image. You're damn sure not getting anywhere near this or this. You're not getting the tightness or the clarity or the purity that I give you for, again, the channel's $5 fee, if you will. Some people call it a paywall, but really, you know what? The channel's got to prosper too. Other people sell out and I simply sell settings. That's just what we do here. And simply put, I hope what you see today will inspire you to start asking questions. The biggest one is, are professional calibrations really even worth it when they look that damn bad? And more importantly, when they hype up features like anti-glare, consider the negative impact as to what it will do to your screen because matte finish screens always disperse light. And that comes as a negative as you guys are clearly seeing video after video. Again, doesn't mean the TV is the worst TV I've ever seen. There are redeeming qualities. Again, 2000, over 2000 nits of brightness in HDR. That's a huge benefit for a lot of people and there's a lot to weigh up. Personally, if you wanted to know where I stand, I stand with the Samsung S90D because it makes more sense financially and it's the better looking image sharper. And again, it's just, it's, it's premium, right? Like when I look at a TV and I have all the details, I look for premium where not so much on the Samsung S95D. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Again, more to show off, but let me know what you guys want to see next. I'll keep it rocking. Thanks for watching the number one brand in honesty. This honestly shocked me. I didn't expect it, but I'd love to hear your comments down below. Until the next video, I'll see you guys later.